say that a book is kind of like having birth, and I don't have a child yet, so but I've got an order placed for one right now, so hopefully, you know, keep our fingers crossed. But um, you know, you 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 conceive something, you you let it just stay, and then two years later, here it is. And it, it would not be possible. Many factors make it possible, but the the, the big factor in my and this being here, besides my husband, is, um, you know, I'm gonna sound like any proud parent to say that my book is the most special, <laughs> energetic book. But the, the thing that made it the most amazing is the women in it. And there's many of them here, and I want you to understand, if you don't, haven't read the book yet, which so many, so many of you are my friends, so you have, you understand the presence you're in. But the women here are amazing and awe-inspiring, and I'm just gonna call them out quickly. So you have to raise your hand. resurrection. This was going to be big. I could feel it. And to kick it off, my six best girlfriends planned a weekend away to celebrate. They wouldn't tell me where we were going, but they promised lots of fun. Now, as a rule, I hate surprises. But at the time, I was working with a new therapist on what it means to trust, which is all about embracing the unknown. That's when the audition material arrived. I was psyched. It was a one-hour drama, and I was auditioning for the role of a detective on a cop show. I loved it immediately. The character was 33, just like me, and her name was Maggie. Something felt right about it. <laughs> the dialogue was seamless. Plus, the show, the show was called Searching. How perfect. I was searching. <laughs> that night, I ran lines with my sweet husband, Mitch, who's an actor, writer, director, until I knew every word. Who is Maggie? Who is she? I kept saying. She is you, my husband said. You are Maggie. Right, I said. She is I. I am she. She is the part of me that could be a cop. She loves justice. I love justice, too. <laughs> the next morning, I got ready for my audition. I ran my lines. I knew them all. I felt good. But driving to the audition, I began to deflate. The old voices of self-doubt grew loud in my head. Who do you think you are, I asked myself. You're never going to get the part. You're too old. You're too blonde. You're not pretty enough. I stopped myself with a pep talk I had crafted just for these types of moments. <laughs> no, I said aloud, you deserve this. They want you in the room. Be grateful, loving, you're auditioning, this is your job. Enjoy the process, <laughs> don't be to the outcome. I looked myself in the mirror, square in the eye, and said, you can do this. This is what you do. You're an actress, you're a great actress. They would be lucky to have you. Let's do this. <laughs> I felt like this could be my big break, that it could put me on the map. This could be my ER, my friends, my searching. <laughs> the, casting, the casting director came out of the audition room. I followed her in. A young man stood behind the video camera, but there were no producers in sight, which was a bit unusual for a producer session. <laughs> Actually, it was totally weird. I must have scrunched my eyebrows or something because the casting director spoke as if she'd read my mind. I know that there's supposed to be a producer session, but they had to step away for a second, so we'll just go ahead and put you on tape. It only took five seconds for me to sink pretty low. This tape will be the kiss of death. A live audition is so much more substantial than being put on tape. This is bullshit. It came all this way, prepared their material, and now I'm going to be put on tape. My insecurities were raging. I don't, I don't mind waiting. No, let's go ahead. The woman seemed antsy and annoyed. I wanted to leave the room straight away, but I needed to act professional. I tried to salvage what was left of my perfect audition composure for my perfect part in a perfect series. The casting director read with me. I tried to stay focused, but something felt off. I finished the torturous scene. I didn't suck, but I was not brilliant. <laughs> Wait here, the casting director said. I want to go get the producers. They need to meet you. Hope returned. Oh, okay, great. I have another shot. <laughs> 
<laughs> she left the room and I smiled at the camera guy to break the awkward silence, but something didn't seem right. She was going to go get the producers? <laughs> so, I said, what's your name? To the camera guy. Do you like working at Warner Brothers? <laughs> he was in mid-sentence when I noticed that the light on the video camera was on. He was recording our conversation. Why is he... <gasps> oh, and then it hit me. Oh, no. Just then, the door flew open, and in ran my six best friends. Surprise, they shouted. Each one laughed and talked over the next, so pleased with their ability to dupe me. We're kidnapping you for your birthday, they chirped. Are you so surprised? <laughs> surprised? I was mortified. And if surprised also meant confused and pissed off, well then sure, I was that too. My head top in the car, the pep talk in the bathroom, and the video operator. I think I'm dying. The girls couldn't stop yammering about how seamlessly they pulled off the gag. Mitch wrote the signs. He was in on it. And so was your manager. Honey, isn't this so brilliant? And now we're taking you away for your birthday weekend. <laughs> my well-intentioned friends, who had no idea what was going on inside my head, squealed and giggled as they dragged me away. I looked over my shoulder at the casting director, who looked mortified as she smiled and waved. They made me do it. <laughs> my husband was waiting in the parking lot. I ran to him for some grounding comfort, meanwhile trying to say face. Honey, honey, I, I, I knew it all along. I said, I knew something wasn't right. Sweetheart. You just auditioned at Warner Brothers, he said. You didn't know anything. <laughs> okay, so he was right. At the same time, I had smelled a fish. I just hadn't listened to my instincts. And now I felt like a complete idiot. How could I let this happen to myself? Why hadn't I questioned the casting director, the script, the empty hallway? Had I started to trust too much? <laughs> I began to spiral into a pit of self loathing as my friends piled in two cars and moved to Santa Barbara. I waved goodbye to my husband from the car window as if I was in the process of being hauled off to jail. I was alone with one of my friends in one car. <laughs> with the other cohorts in the other. I was in shock. I could barely speak. Everything was happening so fast. Honey, are you okay? My one friend asked me. I answered, but I couldn't look at her. I feel stupid. Why would you do this to me in the middle of pilot season? I'm working so hard. Why would you think that's funny? Why, 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 why couldn't we just go away for the weekend? Oh, and you better not show that audition tape to anyone. In fact, give it to me right now. <laughs> she handed over the evidence with her tail between her legs. My arms and legs were crossed tightly around my body, and I guarded myself from everyone and everything around me. I stared out the window for most of the drive, though I couldn't enjoy what I saw. I hated the view. Stupid ocean. <laughs> Birds. Even the sunlight was annoying me. I wiped the kabuki-style makeup off my face with the back of my hand. My black suit felt like a clown outfit. <laughs> we arrived at my friend's beach house, the final destination for the birthday celebration. Once inside, the group of us gathered around the kitchen table. There I systematically laid out what, why what they had done was the most horrible surprise they could have ever thought of of why making fun of my work, whereas focusing so much of my energy was embarrassing, cruel, and confusing. I had gone after a fake job with my entire being, and now reconsidering the audition sides and recognizing all the clues that my husband had planted in the dialogue, I felt twice as lame. Maggie was 33, she was searching, her partner's name was Buckwald, my last name is Bendewald. They were investigating a woman who was abducted at a phony job interview at Warner Industries. I wanted to disappear. I thought, who are these women with such stunned looks on their faces? I turned to a friend, this one a movie producer, and I let her have it. How would you like it if I arranged a fake meeting between you and a famous director or a studio head? I questioned with calm reserve. You'd have prepared the night before, rehearsed your pitch, and gotten really excited, and then just when things felt off, the door would have swung open, and one of these yahoos would have shouted, <laughs> Gotcha, just kidding. Won't you be a little upset? Oh, but wait, then you notice it's not just one yahoo, but it's all of your closest friends. Can you imagine how embarrassing that would be?